Okay, this bee was so much fun to make. Um, all this wood is from Dollar Tree, this oval, and then two of the circle ones. You don't have to have two, but I am going to use one just to keep it um, nice and solid. And that one is just going to hide, but it's going to keep it, um, you know, flat. <laughs> and then I've got my two hearts here that will become the wings. And then this last little piece here is from a kit. I like to pick up a couple of these kits in their um, craft kit section um, because there's all sorts of little pieces in here that you can use on projects. So this piece I'm using, I believe, is the front, front of the race car. Um, the little wheels can be great for drawer pulls or like feet on a tray. Here, or you can buy them like this where they're already together and pop them apart. So I'm going to take this little piece. It, I'd like it to be uh, more pointed. So I will take my um, miter shears here and I will cut so that it has a more pointed tip. And then I will uh, sand it down. All right, let's fast forward. I already painted these, and so I painted the head and the body with black chalk paint, and then the two hearts I did with white chalk paint, and then I didn't want it to be white. I wanted it to be a creamier color, so I used my Waverly um, paint and cashew, but it wasn't chalk paint. It was like high gloss acrylic paint, and so I didn't like that either. <laughs> it's like kind of... Um, went ahead and just uh, sanded it down. Then I went into my scrapbook stash and I grabbed some papers. Um, I couldn't believe I didn't have any B paper. That's just crazy for me um, because I have like 10,000 sheets of paper. <laughs> so I am using this um, one with words on it that I found it actually is double-sided. One side is music notes. And I just Mod Podge it down onto the wood. Okay, so for this one, um, again, it has polka dots on one side and words on the other. All right, and then what I'm going to do here with um, the yellow is I'm going to draw out the stripes of the B, okay? And I'm just going to hand draw them, um, just kind of make that arc shape, and then I will cut them out, and then I can put them right down onto the black piece. I found that's the easiest way than just to to cut a yellow and cut a black, so it's much easier just to cut one of them and then uh, Mod Podge it down onto the black piece. I go back and forth. Um, at first I wanted to use the black with words, but then the wings had words. So I end up flipping them and I use polka dot um, on the body and then I flip the head so instead of polka dots, it's words and I liked that much better. But again, this just goes to show you, you don't need you know, B colored or, you know, printed paper, all you need is black, yellow, and orange, and you can use any patterns. I absolutely love mixing patterns. So for me, love it. Now, this bee was inspired by a bee that my friend Linda over at Faith Chick 77 DIY by Design made. Hers is super elaborate. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to link it there above so you can go check it out. So if you want to kind of take this to the next level, go over and check out how she did that. It's phenomenal. Okay, once I get this all glued down, I'll Mod Podge the rest of the pieces down. And then I will just glue everything together with hot glue and the bee is done. Now I did go with my drill and I tried to drill two little holes um, there at the top of the head so that when I put the antennas in, they would have a nice solid fit. Um, for whatever reason, I felt like this wood was really hard. I had a hard time um, drilling holes, so they're very, very shallow holes, but enough where if I filled them with glue, I could stick the little um, wooden dowels into them. So just a wooden dowel from Dollar Tree that I painted black and I stuck into the top, and that is it.
This is my first time trying this technique. Um, if you saw my collab with Farm Charm Cheek, uh, she did this. So you just take a regular piece of tissue, you tape it down onto a piece of printer paper, and then you just feed it through your printer. So now this image is um, printed onto tissue paper. And this is just something I found off Google Images, and I'm just uh, cutting it down. Um, I've seen a lot of DIYers use this method, and I kept meaning to try it, and I am so glad that I did because not not only is it easy, but it looks so good and it's so inexpensive. So this is just a Dollar Tree block that looks farmhousey. I just take some um, Mod Podge, put it on very thin um, because this is tissue, you don't need a lot. And then I just lightly put it down. I use my Cricut um, tool just to smooth it out. Um, you just, again, you really just want to take your time. You don't want to rip the tissue. Um, but again, I mean, this project is so quick and I, I just can't believe, I cannot believe how good this looks. You could just, there's so many options that you could make with these. And with a little dollar twenty-five block from, um, Dollar Tree, think of the endless amounts of decor you can make with these. Um, uh, so Again, that's all I do is just a little bit of Mod Podge there. Um, I personally did not put any over the top. I didn't feel like it needed it, but you can do that as well. And then just with my sanding block, I sanded around the edges so that everything, you know, was on there nice and, you know, tight around the sides. That's it. It stands up on its own and I'm loving the rustic look of this. Also because this particular board has the indentation so that it looks like slat board, I went ahead and just took my tool and pushed it down into those cracks. And now look at this, it looks even more rustic and vintage. Okay, so these two signs are from Dollar Tree. This is what I was talking about in the last project is that I pop these um, little black pieces off and obviously I use them for another project. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do with these is I tried to peel the paper off, wasn't happening. Um, so I actually went and sanded them down really good. And then I'm going to cover them with white chalk paint from Astroleum, actually it's called linen chalk paint. And then I picked up this sticker from Dollar Tree and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it right in half and I'm going to put half on one of the tags and half on the other. And then I'll just glue the two tags together and I just think this is so easy and the sticker is so pretty and this is again, you can find um, really great stickers at Dollar Tree so if you don't have a Cricut actually I think this looks better than a Cricut because of the so many colors. So I'm just going to mark where I want the tags to be glued together and using some wood glue as well as some hot glue I'm going to go ahead and glue them together. I find if I just use hot glue they do tend to pop off and so I wanted to also use wood glue because that really does seem to seal it. This cute ribbon is also from Dollar Tree but it's rather thick so I cut a little strip off to get it a little thinner. And then I'm going to fold it twice and glue it down just to make it a really skinny strip. So I'm gonna do this two times. And while you're watching how I size down this ribbon, I do want to invite you over to Instagram. My name over there is dollar underscore underscore mom. And over there, I share all these projects, um, pictures you can reference back later. I share tons of hauls between Dollar Tree, Dollar General, Target, 99 cent store, um, fun stores like that. I like to share over there. I've also been doing uh, makeovers on rooms in my house, as well as organizing organization tips. So all sorts of fun things over there. So I hope you will join me. Okay, so now that I have this ribbon sized down, I'll go ahead and feed it through here. And again, like I said, I do this twice. I feed it through both of them. And then I'm just going to glue them together. This actually makes a really solid um, 
you know, let's say like piece to hang by because they're really thick now. And then I just made that bow. Um, you will see me, I believe, make a bow later in the video where I use the bow maker and that is how I made, no, no, that's not right. <laughs> no, that bow right there is just two loops, two loops that I just sat on top of each other and then put a um, ribbon around the center with some tails. So easy bow. Um, and then, like I said, I just glue it to the top and that finishes this project. Actually, no, me, it's telling you, I'm just, I'm not on it right now. Okay, so I use one of these jeweled beads. Um, they, it came with the ribbon um, that I'll use later on, which is also linked down below. So cute. These metal uh, designs from Dollar Tree can be a little tricky to design with. Um, since this is going to be a little bit more neutral, farmhousey, rustic uh, video, um, that makes this really easy. I'm just covering it in white chalk paint. Um, actually, I think it is um, plaster. Plaster is the color. And I'm just going to kind of put it on, not covering it super good, um, because I want the metal to show through. And I'm, I want it to show through that I'm even going to uh, take my sand sandpaper to it too. Um, again here I'm going to use my Posca markers and I'm just going to outline. Um, I, I went back and forth if I was going to use the yellow, how much color I was going to use because I like just the rustic look. But I went ahead and just added this yellow because it is so faint and it does give it, you know, it gives it a little bit of the color that I think the bee deserves. Uh, the black to me was like kind of vibrant and was kind of taking away from the rusticness and that is where the sandpaper uh, came in and I really think that was what made it have that good rustic look. My next plan was to grab a frame and then put some chicken wire behind it. I did not have the proper frame in my stash. I couldn't believe it, but I did have this sign from the 99 cent store that I bought for this exact reason. So I'm popping off that top piece. It was, you know, a fall um, piece of decor, but for 99 cents, I knew I'd pop that off and have this cute sign. Uh, so it's coming in handy because look at how good my B fits on it. <laughs> So this one was a little tough because my bee didn't quite fit inside it and just barely fit on the frame part. So I used uh, some e oh, I used some super glue, I think. I can't remember. What do I use here? Yeah, I used some super glue. And I glue those spots and then I put some weight on top of it because it's barely touching that frame. So it's, it's going to take a bit to adhere to it. And then I just added a little yellow gingham bow um, on the bee's neck. And then this project's complete. Another super easy project. Okay, so I had these two little black squares that I popped off another project that you're actually gonna see later in this video. So I decided to make one in like the honeycomb shape. Um, and so I just used a piece of paper to measure it out first and that just made it a lot easier. Okay, and then, so like I just take my um, X-Acto knife there and cut it down and any pieces I kind of missed, I cut with scissors and kind of sanded it down. I'm just going to make one of these, but I was just showing you um, the one off to the side. Okay, so now I'm going to take some of these little um, honeycomb looking wood pieces as well as two of these bees. Um, they were in part one video and I, I will link them again. And then I just took those stickers from Dollar Tree and spelled out be kind. And so again, this is where if you don't have a Cricut, you can use stickers like this from Dollar Tree. And then I just colored them with my chalk um, marker pens, paint pens, chalk paint pens. <laughs> okay, and so then I have this tag in my stash. I actually think it might be from the 99 cent store, but... We know that Dollar Tree also carries lots of these tag signs. Um, I didn't change the back of it yet um, because I wasn't sure how far over the fabric was going to go. So I'm just preparing this to add the fabric to. And this is such fun fabric from Dollar Tree. Um, their fabric is so good. Like they have some of the most fun patterns.
So I'm just going to take this um, Mod Podge over it and then lay my fabric over the top and cut around it. Now you could cut it right to the exact size of um, the tag or you can do what I'm going to do here which is kind of fold it over because the sides were so thick and they were brown and I just I didn't want to bother with painting the sides so this is how I do it and I'll spare you watching me do the whole thing but you will see um, later on the video I do another project where I cover it with the same fabric and I do cut it to sides. Okay, now that my tag is covered, I'm going to go ahead and add um, this little shape onto the front. Um, I just, I love how it turned out. So when I actually put those stickers on, because in the package they were um, on a white background, I thought they were white stickers, but they're clear. And I thought, oh, I'm not gonna like this, but I actually do like how it's clear. And I'm taking some of this honeycomb um, ribbon here from Dollar Tree as well. And I'm just gonna kind of make a little loop um, it can't, I mean, I suppose it could hang by this, but it's really just for looks. And so I will glue everything down and then I finish off um, with a little black and white checked button um, there onto the top ribbon there. It's a little small. I would actually just use a bigger button. Um, Dollar Tree has this like jar of all these different buttons and like a big black button I think would look really nice there. But I just love how bold and fun this little tag turned out and I hope you like it too. I had one of these Dollar Tree signs in my stash. It normally has some sort of, you know, decoration on the front there that I had peeled off. Um, anyhow, I'm just gonna take some yellow paint and I'm just gonna cover the top part and the front part of this. And this is what I get. And then taking one of my paint markers, I'm gonna draw a face on this and it is going to be a little bee head. So I'm just looking at it this direction so I know my eyes are, you know, on the same level there. And then I will draw the little eyes on. Then I drew the face a little small. I could have definitely taken up more room on it. Um, but there's something I think kind of cute when the face is like tiny. <laughs> so that's what I did there. And then using um, a white marker, I gave it a little um, shine in its eye. And then using a pink one, I gave it okay now i'm just going to draw black stripes all the way across the top super easy you can use regular pen pen you can use regular paint i love using a paint pen whenever possible because for me it's much easier to control like where it goes so i love paint markers um, i use all different brands i have like a huge stash so i just i just love those and then after that we are going to make some wings and an antenna and then we're just going to have the cutest little bee uh, to sit on our tabletop i this project is so simple. It really only took me like maybe 15 minutes and that's mostly just because I had let the paint dry. I take any hearts that you have in your stash and I trace them onto just a piece of cardstock. Um, actually kind of like a little heavier than cardstock and cut those out. Then using one pipe cleaner, I just fold it in half. You can cut it in half too, whichever you like to do. And then I just folded the tips over my finger just to give it that little um, like loopy of the bumblebee there. And then it's just a matter of gluing these items on. You told me there'd be better days And nothing that can pull us under You wanna take the pain away but know that I was born as a fight We fail, we fail, but we're better than that We're better than that I know, you know, so why are we holding on, holding on?
For this project, I am using this beehive wreath form from Dollar Tree, as well as this tag sign from Hobby Lobby. It retails for $17.99 and it was on their 90% off sale. So for $1.79, I got this cute tag and I'm just flipping it over because I like the neutralness of this. And then I'm just gluing this down. This is hardly a DIY. It's just these two items and I'll tell you why I'm not doing more to it. It's because I like to have a big piece that's kind of in the background of my decor that's not you know overly decorated and it just really helps give height and dimension um, to your decor. Oh and then my cat OJ says hi. <laughs> I saw this cute container also at Dollar Tree, Be Happy. This uh, foam that they're selling now fits perfectly inside there. I will just take some hot glue um, to get it, you know, so it stays inside. This is just gonna be a simple, simple bouquet, um, but it will add nicely to your bee decor. Um, and so I just grabbed three bundles of the yellow sunflowers from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut them down a little bit so they're not as tall. And then I just bunch them together and I'll push them down into the green. Um, if you do it low enough, you don't have to fill it um, with anything else, but if you want to, you could also put some um, Spanish moss in there. And then with this Dollar Tree bee ribbon, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it around my little bow maker here twice, okay? And after I make this one, I'm gonna make another one in the yellow honeycomb. Um, ribbon as well and layer these bows on top of each other. Now, my video cut off at some point here and you didn't get to see that after I get my bow all fluffed and ready to go, I glue it to um, a stem, you know, from the flowers because I had one where I had popped off the flower so I still had the stem. So I actually glue that stem um, to the back of this bow and then I just put it right into the front of this um, bouquet. So that way it sticks down in with the flowers and it doesn't cover up the words, as you can see there. And that project's done. This is another technique that I have seen a couple times on Instagram and I wanted to try it myself. These are the thermal laminating sheets uh, that you can get at the office supply store. You know, they're so you can laminate like a document. So I just cut a little piece out. You can get quite a bit out of one sheet. And then you just put a piece of paper down like this. Uh, this is parchment paper. And, oh, I forgot to say, it's shiny side up for that laminating sheet. And then you heat at 385 degrees for 15 seconds. Now, my big heat press um, is broken, so I had to use my little mini one, and it, it's harder because I don't know exactly the heat on it. So you can see it actually scorched it a little bit, but it looks all right because I am doing rustic, so we're good. Then I printed out an image on my sublimation printer. If you don't have a sublimation printer, you can actually get sublimation pens and paper and draw stuff. It's really cool. Um, but I'm just going to turn that image down. This is heat resistant tape just to keep it in place. And now I am going to heat this and this one you have to heat for one minute. So with a little mini iron like this, a minute 
all around takes a long time. You definitely want one of the bigger heat presses and I'm bummed that mine is currently broken. Okay, and so with sublimation, it is a hot peel, so you wanna peel it right away. Um, I do have gloves, but this one wasn't too hot. It's usually hotter if you're doing it like on a shirt. Um, it was giving me a little, a little bit of a problem here with the tape, but I do get it off. And I wanna be very gentle when I'm taking it off because if I've missed an area, I can go back and heat it. And sure enough, I did miss a little area right there in the center. So I go back and just heat that one area. So it sublimates down to that lamination sheet. And as you can see here, look at how professional that looks. Uh, of course, obviously there's hangover. So I'm gonna flip it over and you gotta wait till it's cooled off because it's really hot when you first take it <laughs> apart. And then I'm cutting off that excess laminate sheet and then that's it. I take um, sandpaper again, just along the sides in case I had any rough edges. And that is it for this project. It's so easy. Um, oh my gosh, I'm loving these easier things that just look so high end. And again, I'm just going to cut this down where the um, board has that indentation and it gives it even more rustic look. Again, I like how it got scorched a little and gives it that look. Look. I did this one the same technique with the thermal laminating sheet as well as sublimate, sublimated. I am loving this image. Um, so I actually had a little, um, po I, I messed up in the little corner there and here's a great way to fix it. And one of those things where by fixing it, I like it better. So I just took a brad and I cut the bottom part off because I'm not pushing this through like paper like you would for a brad. So I just cut off the little prongs. And then just with some hot glue, I put them on the two corners here. I don't know if you say corners, like sides, because <laughs> it's a hexagon. Uh, but they're just these cute little brads that kind of have a yellow pearl in the middle. And I think it looks so cute. I mean, super easy. I didn't show you the process again since I just showed it on the last DIY. But I, I think I'm going to be making a lot of these because I just, I just can't believe how easy and high-end they look. I grabbed this wreath form from Dollar Tree. It's red, so I took it outside and spray painted it black. I thought red was a really interesting choice, Dollar Tree. <laughs> so now I'm just taking a little piece of you would kind of call it like chipboard or it's what comes in the back of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. And I'm gonna outline this B. So it takes me two of these sheets. And by doing that, I'm going to, you know, have a hefty background to this. I'm not making a wreath, I'm, a, I'm making a little sign. Um, and we're gonna do that by using some of these fabrics from Dollar Tree as well. So now that I have all my pieces cut out, I'm going to go ahead and cover those with fabric. So I will do that um, by using some Mod Podge. Um, so on this one, I was wanting to make sure I had the bees all going the right way, but I forgot the fact that the, the wings are actually tilted and they don't go upright. So, you know, but it still works. They were at least going the right direction as far as like not upside down. <laughs> so once I get that, um, Mod Podge on there, then I just go ahead and cut around um, particularly this ring, ring, wing. <laughs> uh, I do love my um, Ginger sewing scissors. These will last you a lifetime. I have had a pair since I was in college. I took a sewing class like at 19 years old and I still have those scissors. They still work great. I lost them and I had to buy another pair, but now I have two. Anyhow, I'm gonna do that for both wings. Now I'm just gonna cut this, uh, well now you could say gingham or buffalo check, whichever one you use, and I'm using my other sewing sh scissors, the, um, what do you call that? I know that I cannot think of the name, but it's the zigzag shape. And anyhow, I cut those in the zigzag shape just to give it kind of a fun country look. And I'm going to add them to this yellow fabric that I have on the body of the bee. And of course, this is just gonna give our bee its stripes. So I can continue to do that all the way up. And now I will just cut the excess off and my bee will have its black stripes. 
Um, this project was also very easy to make. Um, just And you know what, if you don't have the fabric, you know, you can use pattern paper. And I like, you don't even have to have a B theme. You can just use, you know, yellow checkered or yellow polka dots or there's so many options. And I just, I just adore, you know, using this. So now I'm just going to lay uh, my B on top of all the pieces here. And this is what it will look like. And then you can use, um, any kind of glue that you think will stick best to your surface, um, whether it's paper, fabric. Um, I did use hot glue. Hot glue and wire don't always go very well together. So I recommend doing something like super glue, maybe some E6000. I was out of the clear, so I had to go ahead and use my hot glue gun, um, but if you're gonna want it to stay together. That is what I recommend. Um, you can always do both too. So you can use your hot glue in some spots and then regular glue in the other and then you're going to get a really good um, adherence because you're going to get quick and then you're going to get long term. But like I said, I actually had some uh, clear E6000 on order so I couldn't use it for this pro project. Um, and so I couldn't figure out exactly what I wanted to do with this. This could be cute if you added it to like a big circle wreath. You could make a sign out of it. Um, it took me a minute to figure out, but what I did is I grabbed a black uh, sandwich board sign that I got from Michaels, and I decided that a good thing to do is to put a piece of double side. So you've got your Velcro here, so you know one side's the like coarse and the one side's the soft and so I'm just peeling up the second side of that velcro and then I'm going to stick my B on there and so now what I can do is when I'm doing B season I can just put that on there velcroed on and then when I'm ready to put B's away I can take this off and put it away and then I can add something else seasonal to this board so it really gives this board like a lot of extra use. This is another technique that I wanted to try. Um, so you grab yourself a picture frame. I love these ones from Dollar Tree. They look really rustic and kind of shabby chic. And you're gonna pull the glass out and you're gonna clean it. Um, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit lazy on this <laughs> because my cleaning supplies are in the house and not in my craft room. But you will go ahead and print out any image that you want in the simpler the easier. So I just printed out this B on from my printer and now I'm going to center my piece of glass over the top of it and then just with a paint pen I'm going to trace out this B. Now I'm using a Posca marker. Those are going to be like your high end really good paint pens. I think it's a great idea um, to go to Michaels and grab yourself a black and a white because they're a great staple to have um, in your craft um, supplies. So again, I'm just tracing this. Now, the technique, the thing I saw was actually then they flip it over and they paint on the back just like bold colors and all these different things. And I thought that was what I was going to do. But then I decided to take this video to a more rustic and neutral, um, you know, way. So painting it bright colors didn't really make sense. So I grabbed this piece of scrapbook paper here, um, and I'm going to cut it out to a five by seven, or in this case, a seven by five, because I have it going horizontally. So you want to make sure your words are going the right direction. Um, and then I'm just going to put it behind this image and put it back in the frame and that's it. Another super simple project. Um, like I said, you can paint the back. You could use other mark, uh, paint markers and color it in. But I, like I said, I really wanted to keep this neutral to go with this vignette that I'm doing. This particular one has uh, lyrics, not lyrics, uh, music on the other side. Um, so you could do either way, but I liked just the words better. And that's it. I mean, what a super easy, uh, product project like I'm showing you there you could color it yellow um, so I also printed out a picture of my dog and I'm gonna do the same technique but I'm gonna do the bold um, colors on it and I'm really excited about it um, I got that idea from um, oh gosh I want to say Amanda Nelson but Amanda doesn't seem like that's right Darn it. Anyhow she's somebody I follow on Instagram that does the coolest painting techniques 
I remember it's Andrea Nelson. I'll link her below. I picked up this paper from Hobby Lobby and then I will use the sign from Dollar Tree and I will cut this down to size to fit where that pink is. I went into Cricut Design Space and I cut that little bee out of cardstock. So you don't always have to use vinyl, you can also use cardstock. So I cut one black just for the base and then I cut two yellows and two blues because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue down um, the yellow head stripe and the wings um, just so I have a nice base. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the second um, set that I cut out and I'm gonna use some 3D tape, uh, foam tape, and just then glue those down so that it kind of just gives my bee um, a little bit of a 3D effect. And that lastly, I'll just glue on his little rosy cheeks. And then I'm just going to, I realize that it doesn't look good on black, so I just cut out um, a white circle to go behind the bee. And just because I'm not great at cutting circles, I thought the little scallop scissors would work good. And I will then put that, that white circle down um, onto the black and then put my bee down. So I'll just glue all of those together. Okay, so now it's glued together. I'm going to take um, a pipe cleaner here, wrap it around my finger, that'll make the little antenna. And then I'm gonna glue two of these to the back of the sign and glue my little bee to the inside of the sign. And this project is complete. Um, it, it just makes me happy. It's such a fun, happy bee um, sign. Grab one of these long signs from Dollar Tree. This one, the paper was peeling up super easy. They don't all do that. Um, you can run a little heat gun over it, but this paper was coming off easy peasy. <laughs> and then once I got the paper off, I just painted um, the whole front there with white chalk paint. Again, you can just flip this over and paint it as well. Now I got this from Dollar Tree and look at how warped it is. I'm not sure what happened from when I bought it to this moment. <laughs> so I'm gonna actually take it apart and I'm going to use bits and pieces. So first I'm gonna pop off the bee here. Be very gentle, be very patient. Um, I did break one of his antenna, antennae. <laughs> uh, but I was able to glue it back together. You told me there'd be better days And nothing that can pull us under You wanna take the pain away But know that I was born as a fight now I'm gonna use this uh, second piece up here as a stencil. And so I'm going to make um, a honeycomb stencil with that. And I was just showing you the alphabet letters from uh, Dollar Tree. I just didn't have the right letters, so I grabbed some out of my stash um, that worked just as well. And then I, they're not stuck down yet. I've just kind of got them uh, laid down. I always cut my letters out and lay them down first so that before I stick them so I can know where I want to lay them. So uh, I thought I was using a pencil, but it was a pen. <laughs> so maybe you wanna use a pencil. And my paint was just like not covering the pen. So then I ended up outlining um, 
my little honeycomb thing here with a, a black sharpie. So I'm just gonna do this on the top and bottom and then just using some yellow paint, I will paint those in. So this is a great alternative if you don't have a Cricut. Um, I actually saw this design in Cricut and I thought, you know, I'm gonna try to make it again without a Cricut to show you how you can make a cute sign um, <clears throat> if you don't have one. Also, if you didn't find the sign, a Dollar Tree, you can just um, cut your, I think it's called a hexagon. Is that a six sides? You could just cut one out and then just use it also as a stencil. So with the little stickers here, um, I am going to put down welcome to. And again, these particular stickers aren't, I don't know if they're from Dollar Tree or not, but I know Dollar Tree has smaller um, stickers and they also have the smaller rub-ons. And then, uh, then it's just a matter of putting um, the sticker, the big letters on, which I did our hive. So it'll say welcome to our hive. And then that B, I also just painted black, white, and uh, yellow with the same colors and just stuck everything down. And then the sign is done. Cute for the porch um, or put it in your house. Um, I just really thought, hey, this didn't turn out so bad. If you don't, like I said, don't have a cricket. After I got all the stickers down, I did put a layer of Mod Podge over this so that I knew the stickers would stay stuck down, especially those little ones, and then it also can go outside. Okay, for this project, I'm using this two pack of small wreath forms, and I am going to set them side by side, and um, we're going to make an actual bee looking wreath. So this is the ribbon I was talking about in the last um, project there that I got off Amazon and it also came with those cute bee um, little charms. So I'm going to take these ribbons here. There's three um, different designs and I'm going to kind of X them and then I will pinch them in the center and then add um, a zip tie. Now you do want to dovetail them probably first will make it a lot easier which I end up doing later but for now I was just kind of playing with it. So as you're going to put the zip tie around the center, you're also going to zip tie it at the same time to the wreath form. So there are three lines there on the wreath form, like three circles, and I'm only going to put it around two. So in this case, I'm doing the bottom and the middle. So then when I go and put the second um, set on, I'll do it around the top and the middle, and then I just alternate. And before you pull your zip tie really tight, um, and make sure your pieces are equal, although there's maybe so many on here that it won't really matter. But in case you like me, you kind of like things equal, you have a little wiggle room here to pull it, pull it through to make sure that both sides are equal. And then once you're happy with that, you will go ahead and pull your zip tie tight and cut the tail off of it. And you're just going to do this all the way around. And I used eight bundles. Oh, also, um, my ribbon is seven and a half inches. That's what I cut them to. <laughs> See, now that I put it on, I'm dovetailing. Yeah, it's much easier if you do it before, but I was just practicing here. Okay, so I will cut ahead there to it all done. Again, I said I had eight um, bundles for that one. And then I actually end up having eight bundles for the second one as well. But now I'm going to zip tie the head there to the body and just flip it over and just use as many zip ties as you need to to make it really secure. And then once it's the head's on there, you can go ahead and after that and fill in the rest of the ribbon bundles. Um, again, I saved you from watching me do that over and over. Um, but that will complete our little bee body.
Okay, so now I grabbed some pipe cleaners, black and white, and I made two antennas here. And then I just took one and I bent it in half, and that's going to make our little stinger. And then with the white ones, I just kind of round them, and that will make their wings. So I wish that one was a little bit bigger if I had longer pipe cleaners, but that's just going to have to do. So I just go ahead and I wrap them around the wreath form and then add glue where I glue them back to each other nice and tight. And then that completes uh, this project. I thought it was fun just to kind of make a wreath in a B shape. And I just thought it would be a really fun addition and something unique for a wreath. Dollar Tree has a lot of signs and different things that are in this shape, which makes it perfect if you are doing bee decor. So again, I'm just going to take um, some Mod Podge and put my fabric down. This is going to be a very basic project, but again, if you are doing a bee like vignette, this is going to be a nice piece for the background. Um, it just will give you a little extra, um, you know, uh, dimension for your decor. So once I get that um, cut out, I'll just flip it over here and with my X-Acto knife, cut it right down to size. So we saw that other project where I wrapped it, this one I cut down to size because the sides were already white. And so I didn't you know, need to paint them or wrap the um, fabric. Now some, again, I don't know what happened to the footage, but I also take a yellow ribbon and I go all the way around the sides of the hexagon um, not hexagon, sexagon, sex, sextagon, I don't know. <laughs> so using another one of this little bee um, charms, look at how perfect, it's the perfect size to go over that fabric. So I just glue it down. I thought it was so fun to find this uh, hexagon canvas from Dollar Tree as well as these clear cling stamps. Now you do need a clear block uh, to add the stamps to and I'm not haven't seen them at Dollar Tree. I'm not sure if they're there or not, um, but I did have one in my stuff. So I'm gonna take uh, this little bee stamp here and I'm gonna stamp it all over. This is gonna become a background. I originally was going to also uh, stamp it yellow over the top. My little, my yellow was uh, dried up, so I end up using um, a yellow paint marker. And uh, then I'm also going to use one of the um, other B stamps here just to give it some different dimension. So a lot of times when I create, I don't always know where the project's going to go. And so I thought this was going to be just a sign um, all by itself, but it does evolve into something else. So once I get this colored, I am going to go on to the next step. Like I said, I start the next step thinking it's going to be a total other project. I also found this stencil from Dollar Tree. I thought maybe I'd use it, but I did not end up using it. I picked up this wood piece from Dollar Tree and I just painted it yellow, black, and white. All right, on to the next step. I know it's kind of all over the place, but all of these elements will come together. So taking some white deco mesh from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them at eight inches. And then I'm gonna cut some ribbon also at eight inches, but I really think you could use seven inches instead. Unfortunately, all I could find was two rolls of polka dot and one roll of stripes. So I've got a little bit more polka dot ones than the others. So I'm going to take two of those pieces of deco mesh that I had just cut, roll them up, pinch it in the middle, and then I take some of the ribbon that I did dovetail, 
and I'm also going to pinch it in the middle. So I do two deco mesh and two ribbons. And then I'm going to take a half of a pipe cleaner and tie these all together. Now, this was not enough to go around an entire wreath. It only went around halfway. So I used two rolls of deco mesh, two rolls of polka dot, and one roll of striped. So if you want to make this and have it go all the way around, you're going to need to double that. So what I've done here is I put one in the two center ones and then the two bottom ones. The two centers, the two bottom uh, rungs there on this wreath form. And just keep doing that all the way until I run out, which was, I actually think it's more like two thirds it covered. But that's okay because all our wreaths do not need to look the same. They don't always need to be all the way around. So here is what I'm left with. And this wood piece from Dollar Tree fit absolutely perfectly on top of the canvas. So I really thought this made a cute background. Um, then it makes this wood piece really pop. And then I'm just going to add some more pipe cleaners, hot glue them on, and then tie them to the top of this wreath. And now I have a different kind of wreath that I think looks really cute. You told me there'd be better days And nothing that can pull us under You wanna take the pain away But know that I was born as a fight We fear, we fear, but we're better than that We're better than that I know, you know, so I I'm just going to make a simple bow um, with this ribbon also from Dollar Tree. It's cute. It has a bee print on it. They actually have lots of cute ribbon. I really have my fingers crossed that you can find it. I'm just making one of these three loop uh, ribbons uh, bows here. I'm going to add that to the top of the wood part and then this wreath is complete.
Okay, we're gonna start by making a tassel and I'm just grabbing some black twine and I'm just found any old thing to wrap it around. Um, this is actually ended up being kind of thick. You can just cut a little piece of cardboard. Um, you can wrap it around your hand, whatever. And I don't have any amounts that I do and I just keep wrapping until it's got the fullness that I like. And then I will just uh, cut it here. And then you're gonna want to cut a separate piece. That's gonna be the piece that ties your um, little tassel. <laughs> that, that word was not coming to me, tassel together. And then I'm just going to, what do you want I wanna say, thread through some more of this twine. This is what I'm gonna uh, put the beads on um, when I get the little tassel done. And so I, I did wind this a little tight. I was having a little trouble getting it off <laughs> this thing here. But uh, anyhow, you, you're just going to tie a knot around the top one third. And that top part is going to be like the top of your tassel. And I just tie that with uh, two knots. I don't love the twine that I used here. It's very thick. It's kind of waxy. Um, so it, it doesn't like kind of lay very well. Um, it's just what I grabbed. <clears throat> So once I get that, then I'll trim the bottom of my tassel. Okay, now I have the other part now to start uh, putting the beads on. So you'll see here that there's actually two pieces and that's just because it's going to give it a nice clean finish that way. You don't have any like weird knots showing at the bottom. So I found these little yellow beads uh, from Dollar Tree. They come in a four pack. I want to say it's pink, blue, yellow, and green. And they're kind of small. And then the other beads that you're seeing, I purchased off Amazon and I will link those down below. Um, those are great. They go with any project. And then you can just add a color for whatever season you're in. And I just really actually like the tininess of the yellow bead. It just gives it a little something extra. You could put a yellow one in between each bead, whichever you prefer. And then lastly, I will attach this to the little plaque you see up there. It says Scatter Kindness and has a little bee on it. That is from Dollar Tree. They're called wreath charms. And I tend to find them in what, if they have like a spring section or they're usually just in the floral section of your craft area at Dollar Tree as well. I picked up a lemon one as well that will make an appearance uh, when I do a lemon video. Again, super simple project, but this is going to add the cutest look. Dollar Tree has super cute bee signs, like you literally can just buy them and add them to your decor. But of course I have to just spruce it up a little bit. So I'm using these little wood pieces um, that my friend Tracy makes and I will link her site below. If you've been watching my videos, you know I use a lot of her wood shapes. Um, and so these little honeycomb shapes, 
I'm just gonna put a couple up here at the top and then I'm just gonna glue those little bees on and that's you know pretty much what I'm doing I'm leaving them natural because I really like how um, the honeycomb there at the top has that kind of natural look and so I don't paint any of it and then I take a um, wood skewer, no, a wood steak, a wood steak that I picked up at the 99 cent store. Um, they also have them at Dollar General. I saw them there as well. Um, you could also use like paint sticks and I'm gonna make a frame uh, for this. And I just think it took it up quite a notch, made it look really farmhouse, like something you would buy at Hobby Lobby. And it cost me a couple dollars. Okay, first I'm going to take this sign here and I am going to paint it with black chalk paint. Okay, and then I decided to do it vertically and I found this shape wall tile at Dollar Tree and I thought it looked like a honeycomb and so I am going to um, cover it onto this. Now you could buy a couple of these and, and put them together. But I wanted to make it slightly hang over so that, you know, it just gave that look. So just took that garden steak there and I'm going to take some super glue and some hot glue to glue that down. And then I just put something heavy on top so that it gets nice and secure. Then I went over to my Cricut and I found this. Um, I got it off Creative Fabrica, but I don't like the little cutesy bees or the arrow because I feel like this, you know, bee is a little higher end looking. So I'm going to cut the arrow and the little bees um, off of this vinyl and then I will put it down and this project's done. Easy peasy, so easy. Now I know I'm getting a lot of comments about I don't have a Cricut and I'm sure that can be very frustrating but I hope that you can um, either use your own handwriting with a white um, a chalk pencil or white paint pen. Um, I love white chalk uh, pens. Those work really great. So um, like I said, I just put this over at the top and I just think the sign is so cute. And I just, yeah, I'm just kind of being obsessed with these bees. I did want to do one quick Cricut sign. I have wanted to make one of these and I hadn't attempted it yet. Um, in Cricut Design Space, they have all these like circular door signs. And now that Dollar Tree has these nice big circle signs, uh, it makes it super easy. So I took one of their signs and I painted it with white chalk paint. And then I just cut this out on my Cricut. Um, again, this was in Cricut Design Space. I realize we already did one that says welcome to our hive, but this one I just wanted to make it too and that's what it said. So what I did is I measured the circle, which was around 12 inches, and then I went into my Cricut Design Space, and I made this image to be the same size circle. And I think it turned out pretty good as far as how well it fit. 
So one of the things I'm doing here that I'm noticing is more helpful is instead of peeling off the entire back all at once, I'm just peeling it slowly and then putting it down. This way my, you know, my vinyl thing doesn't stick to itself or get in the wrong spot. I was having some problems with that. And doing it where I just bend a little piece and then put it down slowly has really worked well. Okay, once I get this all down, then I will go to the second layer, um, which is the black layer. And it was not lining up quite right when I was trying to put the whole piece down. I'm not sure why, since it cuts out the way it should, which was no big deal. All I did was cut the image in half and put down uh, the welcome part first. And then it made it so everything else aligned up a lot better. So you can see here, that's always an option um, if you're having a hard time too putting a huge image down. You can see I have it up off to the left there on my iPad because I was trying to remember how it was supposed to look. And so I just uh, put that down um, as well. And then I did also cut out a little bit of white and another yellow stripe that goes on top of the B there. Um, that also was in the design. And I will add that to it. And then that this sign's complete. I just put the hanger back in that came with it. And now I have the cutest little door sign. Um, some options you can do to make this a little bit, you know, like step it up a notch. This can go inside a wreath. Um, it can also, I was thinking would be really cute, is to somehow uh, maybe cut some petals out of, like cardboard and cover them with something, maybe some burlap or yellow or something, and then glue them to the back of this. So like this whole circle would be like the center of a flower. I was thinking that would be really cute as well. But here, another super simple project. If you want to take it. But there was something about this warmer here that just said like honey pot to me. Um, there was something I just thought it kind of looked like a high, like a honey pot. And so I used this little um, image here. Um, I can't remember if it's from Cricut or Creative Fabrica, but um, I will link them below if it is. <laughs> so I just add it to the front. Um, this cute little, it says like local honey or something like that. And then I was trying to think, um, at first, was I going to decorate the inside or the outside? So I go ahead and I decorate this side because, again, I don't know what it is, but there was just something bee-like about this little thing. So I'm going to take some of the yellow sunflowers again, and I'm going to cut three of the heads off. And I'm going to glue those down to the top of this, I don't know, this little warmer. And then off to the side there, you'll see I have a couple um, bees, again, from uh, my friend's wood shop that she sells. And I use my uh, chalk markers there to color them. I highly recommend you having a set of chalk markers. It makes painting little wood objects like that so much easier. Because one, who wants to get out all those paints and then the paintbrush and I clean it in between. This is so fast and not messy at all. So highly, highly recommend them. I do have some acrylic um, markers, um, but I prefer the chalk. The chalk covers much better and then dries so fast. So you can see there, I have one bee flying sideways, and then the other bee I just put on a toothpick that I will glue to the flower, and then lastly, I'll just add a little bow, and this cute little bee um, decor piece is finished. I think it just adds so much to the whole bee decor um, that I will be putting out.
I went into Cricut Design Space and just started looking at different designs that were in the shape of the signs that I was going to use. And then I weeded it down to these four designs, which I cut all of them out. <laughs> And then I'm going to use these signs here from Dollar Tree. I just picked them up like yesterday. I just thought they were, I mean, they're perfect, right? One, this one right here is dry erase, and then you've got like the chalk one. So I made a vinyl cutout for both of these. That's it. That's all I'm going to do is a quick little uh, vinyl transfer down on these, and then this is done. So easy peasy, um, I just, these signs were just too perfect not to just throw um, a Cricut vinyl on. Um, also, I want to um, say that at the end of this project, I kind of just show you two other items that I saw at Dollar Tree that had bees um, that you could use. One is the wood um, laser cut shapes. Um, there's two different ones and they both have a bee in it. And then lastly, I found some bee stickers. Um, again, the store has just so many actual bee designs. So um, I'm sure you can find something to decorate these projects with. This is just a quick little no makeover. Um, I just traced out this uh, piece of paper like this and cut it. Um, it's little bee uh, paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. And now I have to get it to be in the right spots for over his nose and beard. So what I do is, I, as you can see here, I'm just pressing my thumb so that it makes a crease and then I'll know exactly where to cut. And this works really well. And then I just take out my mar uh, paint markers again and I paint the areas that I'd like. Of course, you can use regular paint. I will always choose paint markers if I can. Um, but looking back, I probably would have just painted the beard white. That may have been better because I did have to do a couple layers with the marker. And the pins you see off to the left, those are brush tip pins and I love them, especially like this where I have to get it into small little crevices. You really do need that brush. And so this one came really in handy. Now, unfortunately, my camera turned off. Apparently I had filled it up and I didn't know it had turned off. So it's gonna turn off here in a second. So I'll just show you how I finished this up. So as you can see, not much change there. I just glued that bee paper to the top. I did paint the little stand there with yellow. And then all I did there was add the pipe cleaners again onto the back to give him a little bit of antlers, just like I did to one of the beginning projects. I'm gonna start by sprucing up this bee door hanger from Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm gonna paint it with white chalk paint. And then using my chalk markers, I'm gonna go ahead and color the bee in with yellow and black. So I have to say, I have been collecting for this video for probably nine months. And I just kept seeing the cutest things. And so I have just been collecting them from Dollar Tree. And I'm just really, really excited for this video. I had so much fun making bee um, decor that I'm actually going to have a second video. So much fun. And I just think it's so cute to transition um, out of spring and into summer decor. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about the ribbons there off to the left. This is one of those things that popped up on my Amazon and it was a kit with four uh, different ribbons and then it had these cute little charms, these little bee charms. And I can't remember if I use them in this video or not or if it's in the next video. But I will link those down in the description. But most everything else is from Dollar Tree. I went in and I... Um, Cut this out on my Cricut, oh, welcome to our hive, the best place to be. And I got this SVG off Creative Fabrica, which is one of my favorite sites to get SVGs. Now I'm going to use these yellow sunflowers from Dollar Tree as well as the wagon wheel um, wreath form. Um, you could use a regular wreath, wreath form, but I just thought this wagon wheel, again, just says summer to me and uh, 
So that's what I'm going to use. So at first here, I'm going to take a bunch here with three sunflowers. And then I'm going to use the uh, zip ties there um, to zip tie them on. Now I, because this is all metal, I zip tie these on really, really well. Now I'm going to put this on my front door and where I live it gets extremely hot. We're talking 115 it can get. So hot glue does not, is not a fan here. <laughs> so zip ties are my friend. And so here the nice thing about these wired flowers is you can, as you can see, I can bend them upwards um, to make them so you can see them. So again, I'm going to just keep zip tying them in lots of different spaces because I want them to stay in place. And then I just repeat that going the opposite way as you can see here. Now I do end up putting more flowers in. Three just didn't seem like enough and I think I end up putting four or five in to each bunch. Okay, then I'm going to start working on my ribbon, uh, my bow. So I'm going to use these three. There is, actually, I switch it out. So there's two different bees. One is like a realistic and one is like a cutesy bee. So I decided to use the cutesy bee because of course I have a cutesy bee as part of the wreath. Okay, so now I'm going to just make the simple bow on my bow maker. And as you can see, I have it, um, the little pins all the way out and I'm going to wrap it around three times. That's it. These are super easy to make and they're really good if your ribbon isn't double-sided. So I just pinch it in the middle and then use a, dip, a zip tie <laughs> to um, put it together. So look how fast and easy uh, that bow is. Super easy. Then I bring my little pins in one length. So now this ribbon, this bow is going to be a little bit shorter. And I'm going to wrap it around three times again. So by wrapping it three times, it gives me three um, loops for each side of my bow. So you can do it around twice, you can do it around once, twice, seven times, whatever you want, however fluffy you want your bow. And then I'll move my little pins in one more time and I will do my final uh, ribbon there. And then as you can see, I'm just layering this bow all together. And then once again, I'm going to take a zip tie and zip tie all three together. Now, before I fully close this zip tie, I'm going to feed another one, go in the opposite direction underneath that zip tie, okay? So that'll make it so all I have to do is zip tie this bow onto this wreath. And once I get that all zip tied down, then I can start fluffing out my bow. So as you can see here, this is the zip tie that I kind of slipped under the center of that bow. And then it makes it super easy peasy. So then I just, now I can just fluff out that bow really nicely. And then all I have left to do is to add the bee to um, my wreath here. Um, I went back and forth. Do I want it in the middle, to the side? Um, I kind of always like things, you know, a little bit off to the side. And so I go ahead and I do that. So at first, because I'm using zip ties, I just kind of went with that. And I was gluing zip ties to the back of the bee. And that was not, to, not the thing to do. It wasn't um, staying glued down as well because of the hot glue and plastic. So I go back in and I use... Um, the pipe cleaners instead because those stay glued down really well. So don't do it with zip ties. They didn't stay <laughs> glued to the bee, but these do stay. Now, again, if you have a super hot summer like me and you think um, that this may not stay down, you can always tape it down as well. Um, not sure that you should use a staple gun because I, I think that might go through all the way. But I think I have enough of the stem here um, that it will stay glued down because it, it's when it's that fabric type thing, it sticks really well. And then I just get that tied on there really nice and tight. And then what I didn't show here is that I do end up putting a little um, ribbon at the top um, so that it has something to hang by. 
So, and then that little, oh, I did use that little charm because that little charm, um, I end up using there at the top of the wreath. This is a super quick DIY. I took this bottle cap uh, metal sign here from Dollar Tree. Again, I went on Creative Fabrica and I cut this out on my Cricut. And this is a two layer image. And I just thought it was so cute. I went ahead and I measured on my bottle cap. And then when I sized this, I sized it down just a little bit smaller. And then I just add this down. Now Cricut Design Space also has really cute um, SVGs as well. Lots of B ones. Um, but again, you can get SVGs off Creative Fabrica. You can get a one month um, subscription for a dollar and has unlimited downloads. Or you can just buy images and they're usually around a dollar. Easy peasy. I just think it's simple, but it looks so high end. I'm finally using this calendar for 2022. It has a really cute bee design in it. It's the bee one, which I think is absolutely adorable and farmhousey. Um, I do go ahead and show you the rest of the calendar because this is a really good calendar. I will probably use that freedom one for 4th of July, but I am pretty much in love with every single image <laughs> from this calendar. And they had a lot of good calendars this year. They're still good calendars from last year. They do have a bee. Um, one in last year's calendar. Okay, so this is a wood round from Dollar Tree. I just painted it with black chalk paint. And then I'm going to cut this out into a circle. I tried doing it with a compass. I tried doing it with a string and the pencil. I just couldn't do it. So instead, I'm just marking it a halfway point um, from my center, which I believe was five and a half inches. And then I kind of just... Um, freehand the circle, which is fine because I'm not going to cut this out with regular scissors. I'm going to go ahead and cut it out with scalloped scissors. Now mine are super old. They're probably creative memories. Who knows? But you can get these at Dollar Tree. I know they have the scalloped scissors. So you just want to slowly cut around. You want to match where the last scallop hit and cut that all the way around. Then you're just simply going to glue it down. You could use Mod Hodge, but this paper is super thin and it might wrinkle up. So I just use a regular old glue stick. And as I'm watching this back, it is driving me nuts that to the right there of the hive, it's like it pokes out a little bit. So I'm going to fix that. That's going to make me nuts. <laughs> I just use my brayer to get it um put down really easily. So then I go ahead and I put the little jute right back into the back of the sign. And then I am just going to tie the simplest bow and add it to the top there over the hole. And then this project is complete. Mm -hmm. 